What modern social trend pisses you off the most? The reaction that provokes on me is more cringe than pissing me off, but I'm sick of the xxxx reacts to yiii videos. It's just so embarrassing to see these people acting out a reaction, just to satisfy the actual consumers of the product that is being reacted upon. Then you'll have reactions to the reactions on those reactions. Mind boggling. Public grieving. And berating those who don't grieve publicly. When Chadwick Boseman passed away, people were hounding his co-stars regarding their responses. When Malik B of The Roots passed away, Questlove actually found out by being spammed on Twitter by a bunch of strangers. Imagine finding out one of your closest friends died because random strangers wanted an immediate response from you. I remember when Nipsey Hussle died, not because I had even heard of him before that, but because everyone was publicly stating how devastated they were. It almost seemed like a competition. People were saying stuff like I've been supporting him for X amount of years. Since the beginning. No one is more upset than me. I honestly found it disturbing. It was like his death was just another trend that people on social media needed to post about. This is exactly it. And unfortunately it doesn't just happen over celebrity deaths. A girl from my hometown went missing. And it was eventually discovered that she was murdered by someone she met up with from Tinder. I was very good friends with her younger brother when we were kids, so I knew the family very well. As soon as a story made national news everyone from my hometown started posting memoirs, even those who never knew her, and it became a one-upping competition like you mentioned. The family remained silent. And the brother Rai was friends with deactivated all his social media, because people kept posting about her for months. It becomes almost harassment at a point. Constantly being reminded of your family members traumatic death by people you barely know pretending to care about them. It's disgusting to see people use tragedy to fish for likes so they can feel validated. We had a very similar thing happen in my town. The funeral was packed. People talking about how they knew the deceased cousin's uncle's friend. Asking all over social media how it all happened. Wanting to find out more about the surviving family, etc. The worst part was that the entire family was murdered by their teen son. He killed his little sisters and brothers, his mom, and tried to kill his dad, who ultimately survived. Then the dad had to deal with these vultures constantly bombarding him with self-serving pity and curiosity, plus the news breathing down his neck. The poor man was constantly begging for privacy while trying to come to terms with losing his entire family in one day, at the hand of his own child no less. How everything needs to be on social media. I have to explicitly say to family members, please don't put this on social media at family events etc. As an example trying to post that I had gotten engaged on Facebook before I'd even got to tell close family and friends who weren't actually there. Then getting defensive when you say, can you not post that please? I think that's what annoys me more. The entitlement of people. Like they have the right to post it, and how dare you tell me not to, legal or not. I really don't think people have a right to publish recorded content featuring my face or anyone else they want. The argument I get is back quote it's my facer book. Well that may be auntie Jill, but it's my face and life and I don't want all the random strangers you accept invites from knowing my life. My argument to this is sure that's fair, but if you're going to post pictures from personal events that I invited you to then guess who's not going to get invites anymore? That seems to get the message across. Making young children into social media stars. It's fine to share pictures of your kids with friends. But aggressively documenting and marketing your family life for the public at large is creepy. Whenever I see toys at Walmart about that Ryan kid I just get sad and hope he's as happy as he's portrayed on the box. Because I don't think he is. I'm glad I have no idea who this is. Glorifying celebrities and treating them like gods. Like. I understand being a fan of someone. But you don't have to create an entire livelihood around them. Or try to emulate them. This is also how people get into positions of power when they shouldn't be. I'm just so glad the licking things at the store trend is over. It is over. Right? Please tell me that's finally done. The guy who licked the deodorant at the start of the pandemic got charged with terroristic threats of fake. This obviously hasn't been as big a deal for the last year or so. But the lack of basic etiquette around invitations or even just making plans. 
people feel absolutely free to not respond until the last minute while waiting for something better to come along. And they don't think it's rude to cancel last minute or just not show up without letting you know. I realized a while back that I was doing this to people. So I put a stop to it. I made myself a personal policy where I run my schedule on a first come first serve basis. If someone invites me to something and I want to go, I write it down and commit to going. Even if I'm not super excited about going and I'm hoping that it gets cancelled. If I don't want to go, I just be honest about it. Family vloggers horrify me. The concept of exploiting your children's lives for views is particularly awful. And because it's a relatively new concept there are no real laws around child labor or exploitation concerning it. There are youtubers out there right now who live in mansions worth millions of dollars that they got from shoving a camera in their toddler's face and demanding them to perform for strangers. I can't even imagine the psychological repercussions this will have on these kids in the future. Ah yes. I remember the whole daddy off 5 situation. What happened? Oh man it was pretty bad. They'd make videos of them like spilling chocolate pudding all over the carpet then the parents would lay into a kid and say they know they did it and scream and act all pissed at the kid. Kid would be crying. Pleading with them that he didn't do it. Then the parents pull the ha ha got ya son. It was all a prank as the kid is still sobbing. That was all I seen myself I'm sure there's far worse. One video that stuck out to me was how the family were planning to go to Disney World without the youngest one because he was caught smearing poop on walls. From what I've heard, poop smearing can be a sign of trauma in kids. Letting little kids of social media unsupervised. They are not equipped to handle any of it. So many conflicts spawn out of it. To be honest, most adults cannot handle social media. The celebration of bad attitudes, habits and toxic traits. People would rather be praised for being a villain than to be obscure. People would rather give praise to a villain than to spend a moment not entertained. Went on a date last year with a very book smart woman who seemed like her ability to be savage was the trait she was proudest of. Weird experience. Hope it's just a phase for her. Advertising slowly taking over every single aspect of our lives. I'm not really exaggerating when I say over 90% of the mail and phone calls I get are junk or scams. Data we generate simply by being online being sold to the highest bidder without any real way of stopping it. Which in turn fuels more ads. Went shopping more than once at a larger grocery store. Congrats. You now get suspiciously tailored coupons mailed and emailed to you. Even though you don't remember ever giving them your addresses. Meaning it's probably linked to your credit card and banking info. The internet is great for knowledge if you look in the right places and allows discovery of fascinating things. But it does sometimes feel like we sold our souls to somebody for it. Me buys from Amazon a specific one-off item I don't plan on buying again for 5 to 10 years Amazon. Here's a bunch of ads for this specific item. You should buy some more. I've taken to doing any serious online research for bigger purchases on a secondary web browser in private mode, so that Chrome won't as easily flood me with ads. Use DuckDuckGo. I use it with Ublock. And it's a damn near perfect combo. Treating opinion as fact and fact as opinion. That's my truth. Do your research, says someone who watched some YouTube videos on a subject. Edit since I'm getting a lot of YouTube is actually good for learning comments. Yes. That's true. I've learned a lot of stuff from YouTube too. But my point was that some people weigh their YouTube education higher than people that actually got degrees on the subject and did actual research. Like controlled, peer-reviewed experiments with actual quantitative analysis. That's all. Educate yourself. Educate yourself is just shorthand for you should just agree with me. Apostrophe. The notion that everybody needs to hustle and have a side hustle. Like it's okay that we are all supposed to be cheap ass used car salesmen hawking our wares with no shame or sense of self respect. Backslash backslash, edit, it also frustrates me to no end that people assume that because you are good at something or enjoy it, that you will also be good at and enjoy marketing and selling the thing. Two completely different skill sets. Backslash backslash, on that note, the idea that every one of your hobbies needs to be turned into a side hustle. No one is allowed to simply have hobbies that they love. You have to strive to be good enough to monetize it. I get this a lot. Yes I have a lot of hobbies. 
Yes they are sometimes expensive. Yes they could be monetized, if I so chose. However, then they'd be work, and I do my hobbies as a way to relax from work. How quickly misinformation spreads through social media. It's seriously a dangerous thing in society and it's pretty terrifying. 1. Everyone has a right to have a voice on the internet, but not everyone deserves a following slash authority slash influence. Just because you paid off your car doesn't mean you're qualified to become a financial coach. 2. Couples recording pranks on each other that are so painfully staged. It's the same super popular trends that are reproduced. Like do you really need to act so shocked the 10th time your girlfriend pretends to strip in front of the camera, but actually has clothes underneath a towel? Are you really that shocked? At this point I just block, but I just can't imagine people have that much time 3. Recording people in need for clout. I came upon this couple yesterday with the whole prank thing. They had a bunch where they were in the kitchen. He would hide behind the island and smack her butt, then duck down again. She would act scared and start asking the heir who done it and run around the kitchen until he stood up and did the whole it's a prank babe. These people are getting literally millions of likes, but it's painfully fake. I don't know who is worse, the people who make those videos or the people who like them. The people who like them, 100%. It's not even close. The people who like them give humanity a bad name with their complete lack of critical thought. The people who make them are just capitalizing. Social media influencers asking for free items unsolicited. Then when of course they decline they threaten to, and in some cases do, leave bad reviews forcing the company to have to respond to false allegations for no reason. I do like the companies who respond with that great. So happy to work with you. I see you have 20. 000 followers. Buy a weekend with us, and we'll give you a unique discount code you can give to your followers for 20% off. When 250 codes have been redeemed we'll refund the cost of your weekend at our resort, or whatever. Close bracket. This is more work related. But it pisses me off how there is now work culture of always being reachable by email or text for whatever happens. A lot of places expect you to be pretty much on call, even when you're not at the office anymore. I worked at an ad agency, where days off sometimes didn't even feel like that. Because I would still, be getting emails about things, and was expected to be checking them. There should be some level of balance between work and personal life and I feel like that is fading, because it's becoming more and more socially acceptable to adopt this type of culture. I just had a work meeting yesterday, and my boss's boss was in this meeting, and he legit told us to keep our work and personal lives separate as much as we can. We're in it, and sometimes emergencies happen, but if we get an email, text, or phone call after hours and it's not an emergency, they told us to ignore it, and if the same person keeps sending stuff after hours, to let them know, and they'll talk to the person. It's great having bosses that actually care about you and your personal life. Sounds like a great place to work. My job as a manager is to make my employees able to do their job. As part of that it is keeping them happy and stable enough to be willing to continue to do their job. Sorry, Mr. Output is everything and burn them all down. But people quit managers more than jobs and training new people fucking sucks. You can't just buy something now. Everything is a subscription. First it was just Netflix. Then it was Dollar Shave Club. Now every TV channel is a separate subscription. Every household item wants to send it to you over and over again. Nothing is released physically. So the only way to watch a movie or check out a new album is to pay someone monthly. Services that were offered for free or one-time purchase are rescinded and now offered as subscriptions. It's so obvious that everyone and everything just wants to milk you as long and for as much as possible. And people just buy into it willingly. I know people who spend like $200 a month on shit that was free like 10 years ago. People are even offering themselves on a subscription base now. I can't believe how cool everyone is with watching all their money disappear all the time. Recording strangers to see their reactions. Especially idiots who do this in drive thrust. As if those employees don't already have to deal with enough moronic shit on any given shift. Did you see the video of the dude who pulled up at the window and blew his stupid loud horn? The girl threw his drink at him. I'd like to think he learned his lesson. But it was his video. So probably not. 
The whole Instagram influencer thing. Why are we following these people? I don't think a influencer has the same meaning it used to have. Back in the day they were less common. But now I see accounts with 2k followers posing as influencers. Like reposting your vacation pics doesn't make you an influencer. It's not even the reposting. I know someone who calls themselves an influencer with 10k followers. She went to the Bahamas in 2019 and took. I swear to god. Thousands upon thousands of different photos in dozens of different outfits. She's been periodically posting these different photos since then. Claiming she actually lives there. It's bizarre. All of those people lying. 99% of them are broke. There is a place in LA where you can rent time on a grounded private jet to make it look like you are flying private. There has been a huge upswing in young as 20 somethings acting like they took a private flight to some bullshit vacation. Driving while on a cell phone. Driving has always been a little frustrating, but now it's gotten insane. My girlfriend and I can call out with at least 90% accuracy who is on their phone. Abrupt lane changes. 20 miles per hour under the speed limit. Swerving. Looking at phone and missing a green light for 5 plus seconds. And, my personal pet peeve, stopping 50 feet short of a light in a busy intersection during rush hour. Not only is the use common, but the entitlement that comes with it is across the board. Someone waiting at a green light 5 plus seconds. I do a short honk to alert them, they give me middle finger. Like, yeah, I'm the fucking idiot here, I can see you playing on your phone through your back windshield. The other day I had a girl pull across two rows of parked cars in a lot, and had to slam on my brakes, to not smash into her. Instead of saying sorry, she got out of the car, still in the middle of the lane, while still on FaceTime to film me. Like, it's gotten so bad, that I don't see any real solution other than videoing all of these people slash license plates, and sending them to the local police. Posting infographics regarding certain topics. To try and prove you're educated on the topic. Often with patently wrong information. Having an opinion about everything. Even if you don't actually know anything about the subject. Opinions are fine. But admit you're not very well versed on the subject please. No shame in saying HMM. I'm going to read up on this topic a bit more. Before making any definitive statements about it. In general. Just the fact. That people aren't allowed to be private anymore. All your devices hook up to the internet. Your smartphone tracks you in god only knows how many different ways. Every business wants you to sign up for a rewards account. So they can harvest your contact details. Hell. Even my PC and game consoles will rearrange my desktop just to show me advertisements. And if that wasn't enough. People give you strange looks when you tell them you have almost no social media presence. No Twitter. No Instagram. No Snapchat. No Facebook. Not to mention how people just get this confused look on their face whenever I get mad at them because they took a photo slash video of me without my knowledge or consent and put it on their social media. Honestly, it shocks me to see how little people care that privacy is disappearing. Along with this, the right to be unavailable to people. You don't answer immediately. People freak out about it. Used to be. If you phoned someone, and they weren't home you would check back in the evening or tomorrow. I'd really rather not hear about how much money everyone either has, or pretends to have. It's just depressing, even though I know I should ignore it, and focus on myself. I don't think it pisses me off. But it baffles me, heavy social media presence by ordinary people. I can't for the life of me understand, why I'd follow some random person I've never met. I have actual people in my life. And I'm interested in them. A couple of days ago, I first heard the term momfluencers. Fucking really? Why would I base my children's upbringing on the opinions of some twit whose main attribute is the fact that she has time to do this shit? I have minimal social media presence. Because why would anybody care to follow me? This isn't low self-esteem, it's just reality. I'm a completely normal, average person and I know it. I don't fool myself into thinking the world at large would benefit from knowing what I think or do on any given day. I don't know if social media creates narcissistic people or if it just reveals them. I don't know if social media creates narcissistic people or if it just reveals them it sure as f does at least one of the two. I feel like there's a pretty convincing argument that it does both simultaneously. I need no convincing. 
taking insta pictures and snapchat stories of everything. Sure your online persona will look like the cool kid, but people at the party who just lift up their phone to record every time something happens look hella dumb in my opinion. Just live in the moment. Nobody is allowed to have hobbies anymore. If it's not a hustle you should be doing something else according to society. It's infinitely frustrating. When I get off work I'm going to play some damn video games and relax. I'm not going to worry about my side hustle. I love it when these entrepreneur pages post shit like, don't forget friends and family they are more important than anything else, and on the next day they post something like surround yourself only with hustlers and work 100 hours a week, and don't party like your loser friends on weekend just work. Like, my friends should not be my friends, if they don't always talk about money, or what? I'm exhausted with how vapid and fake social media is. Pop culture has always been vapid and fake. But social media certainly shines a brighter light on that fact. Everyone acting like experts on crazily complex topics, because they either read a headline or one article that agrees with what they already believed. That people think their lives need to be viewed to be lived it's like privacy, and being private are considered repressive. People are always online, posting about their lives, and everyone wants validation about every aspect of their lives. Just fucking live back quote M. Social media is a digital zoo. Never thought of it that way. But it's really an accurate take. It's a sociology talking point. I think the quote was something like I share therefore I am. Apostrophe. Entitled social media influencers who contact businesses and practically demand free goods or services in exchange for exposure. Influencers. I can't stand the term. It gives whatever dickhead thinks they are famous a feeling of superiority. Plus everyone seems to be an influencer and not actually engaging in proper life. GRRR. People recording themselves doing charitable acts like buying a meal or giving money to a homeless person. I can assure you that person does not want their face all over social media so you can get clout for being a good charitable person. Sure do a good thing like helping the less fortunate but you don't need to record it and have their face all over social media. Same re, recording people having really emotional moments, and putting it online. Like those videos of long separated relatives being reunited where they are crying and shit. And some person is filming it to put on Twitter? Weird and invasive as hell. Social media posting equals life. This drives me bonkers. Why do people feel compelled to share every single detail about their life? Or every thought that comes into their brain with the rest of their friends slash followers? It comes off a desperate and sad emo. People expect the benefit of the doubt when it comes to themselves, but demand the standard of perfection from everyone else. The fact that if you don't have Instagram and don't document your whole entire existence you're a nobody and don't have a life and live under a rock. Excuse me but since I deleted social media accounts my life seems way more fulfilling and enjoyable than having to worry about how many people views my story and liked my photo of what dirt I ate for breakfast. Basing your entire identity around political parties that don't even represent your interests.